I'm Mr. Snapper. And I'm Red Snapper. And this is Project Nutmeg. Yay! Today we're going to talk about coordinating costumes and the importance thereof. Why? Why is it important to coordinate? Well, when you're performing, when you're doing anything on stage with a partner, sometimes it's helpful to look like you belong together. For instance, Mr. Snapper and Mr. Buddy. You may remember my silent partner, Mr. Buddy. We coordinate. Here's a nice picture of us. We don't look exactly the same. We're both wearing black suits, but he's wearing a tailcoat. I'm wearing a red bow tie. He's wearing red suspenders. That's more of a burgundy bow tie, but a red bow tie. He's wearing suspenders. We both have black hats. He's got a bowler. I have a fedora. But we're consistent. We're, we coordinate with each other. We, we fit together. In a way, but there's a couple of thoughts here. One is there's coordination is a form of consistency. And consistency just sort of mentally equals professional. It's why they wear uniforms at fast food restaurants and, and retail stores. You, the uniformality, just sort of like mentally we think, oh, that they're professionals. And the other thing is, is that yeah, it, it makes the entire thing seem part of a whole. It seems deliberate. Like you, you did this on purpose. You didn't just roll out of bed in the morning, go down to the comedy club and whatever you fell asleep in and now we're gonna do our act for you. <laughs> You're getting salty about comedians. Uh, I wouldn't get salty about comedians. comedians. But there, no, but, but, it's true. but there, there are, are so some stand-up comedians. Like, they look like they rolled out of bed. Yeah. Smelled whatever was the cleanest. And I'll just put this on and go on and do my work. Exactly. And we've fine. worked comedy shows where it's like, oh, thanks for dressing up. <laughs> Actually, that's it, that's funny because Mr. Snapper, Mr. Buddy performed at Flappers in Los Angeles once and we ran into uh, Titus. He was just mm -hmm. sort of like lounging around with some woman and uh, he took one look at us and said, hey, thanks for dressing up. <laughs> Because we were in our suits, so of course. whatever. I mean, uh, stand-up comedians. That's a stand-up comedy is a whole different thing. It's, it's a different world. It's not like you have to wear the blazers rolled up and you, <laughs> your hair all quaffed. Not these and days. Like, that was the eighties. Don't get me started. Don't, don't even, even get, get me started. started. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's intentional. It's intentional it's is intentional. the point. And you look at all the lively arts, circus acts you know, sideshow acts, you want to look like you're part of a unit, like you're representing the act that you're presenting. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it sounded good in my head. So <laughs> we'll go with this. it. We dress in similar colors, mm -hmm. so it's really easy to see we're a pairing especially when we appear on stage together, it's complimentary. Obviously, yeah, when we're on stage together, we do that. But also if, if she's performing in a show and I'm just in the audience that night, I'll still wear some the, the same colors you're wearing. So or that, a red snapper t-shirt or, right. you know, something that shows that we belong together. Yeah. And if this baby left the stage, which she loves visiting with people, then it would be really easy to tell since all eyes are on nutmeg it would be easy to tell oh this is her owner they're they dressed. go together they're dressed the same they're wearing the same fabric right mm -hmm. and she liked helping me work on costumes of course she wanted to be part of the whole process hello my little sugar plum fairy are you here to help me make your dress Here's your little dress. I'm working on your dress. You like the color? It's good for me. It's your little dress. I had to find the right pattern for her dress first and the right pattern for me. Now it's a little bit easier for me because I've been costuming myself for a while. I've been sewing since I was five. I've got a pretty good idea of what could work and what wouldn't work for me. I'm not going to draft patterns. I avoid it if at all possible. I know how to do it. It takes a lot longer for me to draft patterns than to just cut things out and work. 
And let's not forget that her debut date moved up. To move up, yes. So I had less time. Less time. <clears throat> I bought a pattern for her from Etsy. I made the Dallas Stars dress as the mock-up to make sure that it would work. And it was, I think, the extra large version of the dress. Because I guess the only people who dress their clothes have, like, Dress their dogs. Or dress, thank you. I guess the only people who dress their dogs have like pocket sized dogs. Purse dogs. Purse dogs that are all the same, you know, same measurements like chihuahuas. And then anything bigger than a chihuahua with a rolly chest and stubby legs or whatever. Yeah, just put a handkerchief on them and you're done. And you're done. Like, no, <laughs> she, needs, a... she needs a proper outfit. So I had to adjust that pattern and add one more row of ruffles so that it covers her butt nicely. I tried two extra rows in the mock-up, but she likes to keep her tail curled up much like Bus, unless she's very nervous. So I, don't, I didn't want to have it flip up at the end, and you have to pay attention to how things fit and how anybody moves in them. I almost said how people move in them, which says a lot about how I she's think about... She's a people. That's how I think about my dog. I had to have pockets in my own costume so that I could put her treat pouch somewhere. I didn't want something that interrupted the look of the costume, so I had like I have these really great pockets. And the pockets on this costume are a little weird too. So part of constructing my costume involved making the weird pockets different from pockets I've done for other things because you basically make a a pillow without stuffing. <laughs> for all of the pockets and then you have to sew them on from there instead of just stitching, pressing and then stitching the pocket directly on. So all of this is like double lined. It's a little bizarre. If you watch the episode on costumes for pets, you know that the costume needs to be safe and it needs to be comfy. And obviously she is comfy in her little dress. Very comfy. So comfy she could fall asleep. We had to choose the right fabric, something that was in snapper colors, obvious, la la la, so that we looked good on stage. I am a spring. I dress in spring colors on stage. I don't dress in the customary burlesque black, red, or black, pink combination. That's just not really, that's not me. I'm more Easter egg color. Yeah. With all of my shenanigans, I it, I dress in in spring colors. I had to find the right fabric, and I chose not to do rhinestones. I do a lot of rhinestones. There are some on this belt, but there is very little risk of them coming off. I chose not to do rhinestones because nutmeg would eat them. Yeah, don't <clears throat> rhinestones have like lead in them? Yeah, yeah. When they're crystal. When they're crystal. They're lead. So. That would not be I, good. I didn't want to risk any of that. I didn't want her crunching them and uh, risking her health for some shimmer. I had to find fabric that had a sheen on its own in the right color that would look good on both of us. Snapper colors, very obvious. Something that looked good on stage that didn't have rhinestones, didn't need rhinestones. I'm not gonna sew with sequins. I hate sewing with sequins because you have to pick out the individual sequins from the seam allowance. Otherwise, you dull your needle, it gets janky or things get stitched into the seam and you can see half a sequin, it doesn't look professional. And then you have to stitch over those seams later and replace the sequins that you removed. So, a lot of work. So, I mean, you don't have to, but it needs to look good. So that's who I am. I would replace all of them. It, no, just no, absolutely not. Shiny fabric in a spring color, which is tough to find in the post 2020 world where there were supply chain issues and problems with businesses staying open because of everything that was happening in the world. 2020 and beyond as we were finding our footing living in a new uh, a new world a whole new time <laughs> a weird timeline the gas leak year I guess we could call it it's the gas leak season so it was it was tough to find good fabric 
there are fewer places open and fewer places to find fabric and I really wanted to feel it instead of ordering something and finding out that it was too flimsy we did our best it is nice fabric it looks great on stage it, it has kind of a little bit of a crinkle to it and it felt pretty sturdy when I bought it okay okay All so right, poops. I did uh, nutmeg's costume first obviously because it's a little bit easier for me to put my stuff together and she needed to get used to it and I need to make sure that it would all work where are you going stay here I have a ruffle foot that I bought when I had a commission, a costume commission for someone where they needed a lot of ruffles. I bought a ruffle foot instead of... She's so snoozy right now. Oh my goodness. It's ridiculous. Hi. So I just can't fall asleep here now. <laughs> instead of gathering these by hand and pulling the, th you know, the thread to make sure that it gathered neatly and evenly, I bought a ruffle foot when I had a commission that required ruffles a couple years ago, a couple years, a few years ago. And that's how I made all of these. They're just perfectly, perfectly ruffled, thanks to that foot. Yep. And the ruffles look really cute. I mean, it, she looks adorable. And it looks very cute on her, and they give nice motion. It's all about the dog. I'm just dressed to match her. But we, it, it was sturdy enough for me to put the little harness hook on it. I had to make sure that it was sturdy enough for that so that I could just clip the leash to her and I didn't have to worry about her running off with somebody because obviously she wanted to meet everyone in the audience. You're so friendly. You're so friendly. She's the friendliest little puppy. I love her. Oh, I love her. You're so tired. So Velcro, one thing about this is the fasteners are Velcro. So Velcro fastener. And here we go. You can see there, it's nicely matched. Yeah, baby. So, but Velcro, you know, it's got the soft side and it's got the sticky side. And the sticky side loves this fabric. It loves to stick on this fabric. And that's a kind of a problem. So you can see there's some, I don't know if you can see actually, because we were kind of lit and all that, but there's like spots where the Velcro is caught on this, but also taking the dress off and storing it, uh, there's a danger of the Velcro sticking to the dress itself and, and causing little runs and little, um, What's little it called? Snags. Snags. Cotton yeah. little snags. So I think your plan is to replace the Velcro in this with snaps. Yes. I got some fancy snaps that are used for baby diaper covers. And I'll be removing all of this Velcro. And this Velcro, it's easy to sew the soft side, but it's really tough to sew the hard side. And this is, you know, regular old soft Velcro in a, yeah. a nice color. Velcro is the simplest way for me to make this so that it's expandable or shrinkable for her size. However, Velcro on this fancy fabric causes all kinds of crazy damage if it's not attached to itself. So I have to go in because the fabric is so um, easily snagged. I have to burn all of these spots where it's been snagged. So, lessons. So I'll have to remove that and then I'll put the snaps on to make it a lot easier and I'll have fewer worries. I'll still have some worries about like, oh no, I sneezed on myself, I snagged the fabric again. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not that delicate, but it seems like it. Oh, but baby. getting rid of this, I have a lot of snags where I carry her. And I know not to use Velcro on this kind of fabric. I discovered it while I was doing the the dress itself, and I was like, well, I don't really have a whole lot of time to figure out another solution for this, and I need it to be sturdy, and I know the Velcro works on the stars dress that I made, the mock-up dress. Which is a different fabric, because that's cotton, like, quilting fabric, yes. so it doesn't snag nearly as much. And even if it does, like you've pointed out, that. This is shiny, so the snags show up a little bit more than 
uh, cotton fabric, which is a little more dull, a little more matte. Look at this. There she, she goes. Said, there, but you can you can see her little there. Oh, there she goes. You can see her rumples. I'm done. I'm done performing. No more. I want my bed. I want my bed. My costume was a bit simpler, but it was the first time that I made this particular jumpsuit, which has its own little features. It has the little um, fold over belt loops here with buttonholes. As I mentioned before, the pockets are basically pillows, so they're lined inside and out, and then you stitch them, you top stitch them on. I had to adjust the sleeves so that they worked well for what I needed. I didn't want to have long sleeves with cuffs, which was what the pattern had. Oh, right, because you're handling the dog and stuff. And, and, and I get warm. Well, that's true, too. And I'm under stage light, so I don't want to be like, uh, baking carrying this fluffy little cuss, not this fluffy cuss, but that fluffy little fluffy cuss fluffy. who just abandoned us. I didn't want to have, you know, issues there. It's also longer. I'm not super tall. I'm 5'3", almost 5'4". So I had to cut, you know, hemming the bottom. There's usually a lot for me to cut off. And, but it's easier for me to do my own costume. And it was the first time I made it. I'm making another outfit like this, another jumpsuit, but it's not a proper costume. But I know the pattern a lot better now. Okay. All right. Ex <laughs> accessorizing the dog to match. So uh, there's the peachy color. What would you call this? Peach? I'd call it peach. There's the peachy color of the dress and the jumpsuit. But there is the blue. So there are blue accents, blue bow. We got little blue bows. Little blue bows. There's a little collar and her little, while he's kissing her, you can see she's got a little nutmeg. She's got a little, she's got a little heart. She's got a little blue collar and uh, she's got a blue leash. Her normal collar is this guy here, this little green one. Mm -hmm. Give me back my collar, it's mine. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's the blue to match the blue of the belt, your little tank top, mm -hmm. this, and your shoes. Blue shoes, blue shoes. Oh yes, I wear tennis shoes. I got blue tennis shoes from Amazon. And then I added, I switched out the laces for these uh, lock laces because I don't like tying my shoes so they're elastic. <laughs> And these are not a perfect match. So there we go. They're not a perfect match for not my perfect. bow. Are Let's they a perfect close. match for your bow? Not quite, no. Not quite. Not a perfect match for the tank top or the belt. But they're far enough away from everything else that people don't necessarily notice. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She also has a little blue harness that matches her collar and her leash. Even though she didn't wear the harness on stage... She was obviously, everything was well matched yeah. when we arrived. So there's, you know, it wasn't like, oh, who is this hobo dog <laughs> showing up with mismatched stuff? We have to do a, you know, we have to present ourselves professionally. Right. Because yeah. that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing, my darling. Okay. No salty. <laughs> that was salty. Well, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Please be sure to like, subscribe, boop the bell for notifications, and share us with your friends, your dog-loving friends. Uh, we'd really like to hear from you as well in the comments below. Have you? What's your experience been with dressing your dog? And I know we've asked this in previous videos, but like finding the pattern for her, finding a pattern that fits her, because dogs are weird. They're not all shaped exactly the same. What's been your experience? Like how many returns have you had to do before you got the right size outfit for your dog? Let us know in the comments below. We'd really like to hear from you. And until next time. <laughs> see us next time. See us next time. Bye. 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 <laughs> She's laughing. You gave her little kisses on oh her head. Oh my goodness, she's got little kisses. She's got oh, baby. Little lipstick stains on her head.